Also, I made a slight adjustment here, guys. I noticed in my previous video, I accidentally put in 400 pixels for the site tagline, which is this entire section here, instead of 300 pixels. So it should be set 300 pixels. Again, if I get encouraged by you guys to, uh, I will post these files. You can actually pick them apart. But that means I need some serious support with likes and comments and subscriptions and Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so let's finish out the these three div tags here. Okay, now let's think about this intuitively. Okay, this is going to be the rule for these div tags. We're going to create the rule for these three div tags here. Now we can set the site we can set the width inside of a class tag. The advantage of doing that is classes are defined and classes can be assigned. So I can assign that to that class. I can assign the class of that div tag instead of hard coding. Why should you do both? Okay, so I'm going to select the tag. Now keep in mind these tags are ready to have floats appear to them. Assigned to them, rather. I'm going to select the tag and we're going to create a rule. I'm going to select the tag and create a rule. Okay. We're going to create a rule for what's new. So let's create what's new. Let's make the box, let's make it a percentage. Now we could say 900 divided by 3, which makes each box 330 pixels wide. We could do that. We're just going to do with percentages here. So let's just make this 33%. Now I just want to share a concept with you. We're going to make this 33% and not give any padding. You're going to say, what? No padding. My text is going to smash up against the box. I'm going to show you a technique of how to avoid that from happening. So we're not going to float this because nobody floats. We're going to just make the width of this 33%. Okay, so it moves over what's new to here. Then we're going to do the same thing for this div tag. We're going to select this div tag, our mission, and we're going to assign the same rules. Now, another technique here, we could duplicate this, and therefore it's the same 33%, and we have to type its name. I think it's similar to just making a rule, select a tag, make a rule. That's personal preference. So let's make this. Now, again, if you want to say that our mission is part of main content, that's totally up to you. I'm just going to make it simple for our mission. We're going to drag this underneath main content. We're going to do the same thing here for box 33%. And turn. Okay. So by default, by default, our services appears over here because it floats to the left, content goes to the right. Floating to the left, content goes to the right. So we're going to select the tag, select the tag, and make a rule. Select the tag, make a rule. We're going to call this same thing it's called our services and we're going to float to the left i'm sorry we're going to make the width here we'll be here 33 percent now by default when you make when it fills up this entire space here by default of course this is going to force follow us here now follow us let's look, let's say this for a second let's look back at our design comp here so follow us is going to come over here then the rest of the content is going to go here so this appears that this is going to be roughly 33% because it follows this column here, if you want to look at it that way. And this will take up 66%. So we could do that. Okay. Now, if you want to do that technique here, then these two things would have floats associated to them. So let's, let's examine that. So let's go to follow us. Let's make a rule for that. Let's make a rule for follow us. Now, important step here, we did not assign a float to follow us when we made our div tag in a previous video. When we made our div tag, we could have come up here and said float to the left. But I just want to share with you the flexibility of the program of how I can assign existing classes to existing tags. Okay, so we're going to, first of all, let's create a rule for this. Select the tag, make a rule. Select the tag, make a rule. You want to affect the tag. We need to select the tag. Again, I just want to say follow us. So we're going to make this one be same thing, 33%. If I could type the percentage key, not the dollar symbol, but the percentage key. Okay. 
So follow us floating to the left. Now I want to assign, I'm sorry, it's not floating to the left, it's just 33%. But if I want client quotes to go to the right of us, and this needs to flow to the left. So how do I do that? Well, classes are defined, then classes are assigned. I define what the class does, then I assign it to something. So I select a tag. Always, always, always select the tag. Select the tag. Don't just select the content, select the tag. Based on these choices, these are my choices. I'm going to assign the class called left float. This is going to float to the left. Therefore, this appears to the right. So now I'm going to select this content. Now keep in mind, this has a rule structure. So by default, client quotes is going to take up this entire space right here. Because it has no rule structure. We haven't created a rule for it. Extremely important step here, guys. Do not confuse the tags with the rules over here to the right. These are my rules. These are my tags. The tag has to be applicable for the rule to be applied. Does that make sense? Applicable, applied, something like that. Anyway, so I select the tag, make a rule. Select the tag, make a rule. Again, I'm going to make this less specific. So this is going to be 66% wide. 66 and 33 is 99. So this is going to be 66%. And we want to float this to the left as well. So select the tag, select the tag based on these choices, float to the left. Now, I just want to share with you, technically, unofficially, we could float this to the right. Now, you would typically float something to the right if, in fact, you're going to have space between the left and the right. By floating something to the right with one inch space, get one inch space from the left and the right. But if you're going to put things exactly right next to each other, we can simply, simply, simply float to the left. Okay. Now, these are going to be header tags. These are going to be header tags. Now, important step for SEO. SEO, search engine optimization. Every div tag should start out when possible with the exception of, say, the nav tag. Every div tag should start out with an H1 tag followed by an H2 tag. Why? Because search engines index your page based on the header tags. So it's a good practice, good habit to get into. So now we have the basic layout of our site. Now we haven't done the footer tag, so let's finish up with the footer tag. So footer tags way down here. Okay. Now, important step here. Footer tag, footer tag has to have a special thing associated to it. Now, Let's look at our design comp again for a second. So footer information is going to be the information that's going to be down here at the bottom. Now, most modern websites have a whole bunch of stuff inside their footer deck. It's a whole separate website. If you look at a lot of your modern websites, you'll see at the bottom here, you have links, you have pages, you have all kinds of stuff at the bottom. We're going to make a slight design change to this so you can visually see what's happening. We're going to select the footer tag. We're going to select the footer tag, and we're going to make a rule for the footer tag. Select the tag, make a rule. Select the tag, make a rule. In order to affect the tag, we need to select the tag. Now, let's take this one step at a time. Here's my footer tag. Now, what I want to do to my footer tag is make this a little smaller. We're going to make this 9 pixels. We're going to make our type white, because we're going to make our background black. Now, pay close attention here. Before I go to my black, background. I want my footer bot, my footer copy, my footer text, my footer content to vertically be in the center, vertically up and down. So let's say I want my box height to be oh, 50 pixels. We're going to make our line height 50 pixels, not our box height 50 pixels. Very important step. If you make your box height 50 pixels, it's going to smash the type to the top of the box. Then I have to play games with padding and margin. I don't want to do that. So we're going to make our line height 50 pixels, font size 9 pixels, color white, because the background color is going to be black. Now, in addition to that, we want to go to the block category, category block, and align our text to be in the center. So now our footer is going to be horizontally aligned to the center and vertically aligned top and bottom to the center. Now watch what happens here. If you get the apply option, okay, footer is basically, I just want to scroll down here for a second, okay. Vertically, this is in the center. What has to happen here is footer, 
Footer needs to clear. Footer needs to clear the floats that are above it. So based on these choices, footer needs to go to the box category. And above my footer tag, I have floats. I have float all those tags that floated were left floats. Now, if you had right floats, then you would clear right. If I had both left and right, I would say clear both. Now, in this particular case, I'm going to think ahead a little bit. Because later on, I'm going to show you techniques of floating things to the left and floating things to the right. So based on these choices, we're going to clear both the left and right. Okay, so I'm going to go back. So footer tag should be at the bottom. I'm going to go back up to the wrapper tag. And wrapper tag, I'm going to give a height of, no, well, actually, wrapper tag has a height of nothing. Okay, so wrapper tag, sorry, main content tag is basically forcing the wrapper tag to be at the bottom. I'm sorry, the footer tag to be at the bottom. Now, again, we talked about this before, but I've hit Command I, Command I, that's going to show me if I have this selected right here. So I'm going to say, show CSS background layers. This is going to show me the background layers for the entire site. So it's going to show me where my footer tag is, main content tag, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Pretty cool. So we're going to continue building this site in our next video.